On this video, we're going to do a quick discussion of the resistor component. So it's mostly going to be the electrical properties, but here is what it's probably going to look like most of the resistors that you use these days. So probably going to be a blue body with five bands, four for the value, one for the tolerance, so that's the percentage higher or lower than it can be from its actual value. you learn about that when you learn the color code, but there's also beige body ones with three bands for the val uh, value and one band for the tolerance, usually gold for 5% and so they got four bands but most are these blue ones with five bands when you're studying electronics though mostly you're going to be looking at uh, sheets kind of like this or other uh, websites whatnot that use a schematic symbol so it just uses a symbol to indicate that you got a resistor in that spot and it'll likely have the value written above it there's also a rectangle that's used to indicate resistors tends to be uh, when I come across them from another country I live in the US but they'll have the value in the middle and then often they'll have the omega symbol afterwards the Greek letter omega to indicate that that number is in units called ohms and really quickly we're gonna talk about the three basic things that they do so first off they limit current that's why they're resistors their electrical property is that the current going through them is the voltage across them divided by their resistance and so as resistance goes up you'll have less current it limits current now it divides voltage so when you have the resistor in series with other components which is the majority of the time let's say it's 10 volts and uh, a different component for whatever reason has 3 volts across it you're only gonna have probably 7 volts across the resistor so it takes some of the voltage off of other components and that's one way it limits current too uh, those are uh, advanced topics for other videos but just be aware, limits current, divide voltages, and in the process, it creates heat. So that's the other thing we're going to focus on in this video, limiting current and how much heat is generated because most of them are rated for a quarter watt. If you just get uh, resistors in a kit or something, you're pretty much guaranteed they're quarter watt resistors, but you still want to keep them under an eighth of a watt so that they still don't overheat, that they last longer. So power, wattage, is voltage times current right there. Now really quickly here's something I just kind of drew together to show you how I visualize current when it comes to resistors especially but in any case the current got to come in one end and out the other so you got to put a voltage across them to push that current it's gonna flow pretty much freely through the wires but uh, the resistor you can kind of think of it having bumps where the current runs into stuff and uh, basically limits its flow so you got to have an equal amount in equal amount through and an equal amount out right there because the current on one end is pushing on the other so you put a voltage across them let's say we got three resistors here they all have the same voltage whatever is it one volt five volts whatever the main thing is that uh, a lower value resistor has less resistance so I got smaller bumps there let's say that's one kilo ohm that's two kilo ohm with twice the size bumps and then three kilo ohm with three times the size bumps as that one there you can see this one has a lot more current flowing through it as long as the uh, voltage is the same that's going to have somewhere about half and then the one with uh, three times the larger bumps going to have somewhere around a third of the current for a given voltage so now while the current's running into those bumps it is building up heat and that's very important that you factor that in when you're designing your own circuits and now we come to the most boring part of an already boring video and that is how you actually think of the uh, current flowing through a resistor it's mathematical right here so we have here a 1 kilo ohm resistor 100 ohm resistor schematic symbols to indicate them we have the ground symbol right there and so that means the zero volt reference point for most part you consider that zero volts and typically you declare the negative side of the power supply and so I'll probably have a black connector or whatnot to indicate negative you just consider that zero volts now you need a voltage difference and uh, so if you're using a 5 volt power supply that's uh, probably the most common these days so we're going to use that as an example so let's say the power supply is set to 5 volts for whatever you set it to 5 volts or it's always 5 volts whatever the case may be you got the uh, positive side of the power supply you declare that to be 5 volts and uh, so if you put it directly across a resistor you'll have a 5 volt difference 0 volts on one side 5 volts on the other that's 5 volts across the resistor so hope that made sense now 
The one kilo ohm resistor is extremely nice because for each volt across it, one volt, one milliamp, five volts, five milliamps, 10 volts, 10 milliamps. Each volt across it is one milliamp of current. Now, not so nice, so that's just current in amps equals voltage in volts divided by resistance in ohms. So I did the math for the uh, 10 volts right there. 10 volts divided by 1,000 ohms equals 0 0.01 amps. So this is basic math. I'm not going to get into it too much. But uh, in case, generally we convert that to milliamps because milliamps just sounds better than point something of an amp. And uh, so that's 10 milliamps. But in any case, now we're going to go back to a calculation for the uh, wattage. And uh, so I wrote that over here. The wattage or power in watts equals the voltage in volts times the current in amps. So before we go to that, most resistors are a quarter watt, so that's their absolute maximum. You still want to keep the maximum to an eighth of a watt or less. That's 0.125 uh, watts. So we won't come back to that. Now we got uh, 10 milliamps right there, 0 0.01 amps times 10 volts equals 0 0.1 watts. So that's almost 0.125 watts. We don't really want to go up in voltage anymore. That's the voltage across the resistor. So you can see we got 100 milliwatts and uh, the current's not terribly high, the voltage is relatively high. So the heat that we're getting now is mostly from the higher voltage right there. But higher value resistors can handle higher voltage. So as we saw here, when we use uh, 3 volts, we got about 30 milliamps through a 100 ohm resistor. So again, a tenth of the resistance for each volt we're going to get 10 milliamps of current going through it. So we kind of hit a point here though where we got uh, 3 volts across the resistor, 30 milliamps through the resistor, and 0 0.09 watts. So we'll look at the math there. There you can see 3 volts divided by 100, uh, 30 milliamps. We're just going to kind of rush through that. 30 milliamps times 3 volts, 0 0.09 watts. So again, we're almost at 100 milliwatts. The voltage is a lot lower, as you can see there. So the heat that we're getting is from the current, the about 30 milliamps of current. And that's one thing with low resistance components or other things. If you let a lot of current flow through them, they still get hot. And uh, so lower voltages can really overheat a low resistance component. And that can be dangerous if you're not careful. So it's generally safe to go higher in resistance than you expect. And if it's too high, you can figure that out and go lower. That's generally pretty safe. The danger is going too low in resistance before you really understand the uh, power needs of the circuit. So now we're going to end this looking at how you would graph the relationship between voltage and current. So we got the IV relationship there, current to voltage. So the relationship is linear. So you can see here, if we draw uh, volts evenly spaced right there and then milliamps evenly spaced right there for a given value resistance whatever the value is we will have a straight line going to where those two points meet so we already talked about a one kilo ohm resistor for each volt across it you'll have one milliamp of current so you got four volts across it you'll have four milliamps of current and so we don't have to do this in milliamps we could do it in amps if we wanted to but uh the angle of the line would be different. That's the main thing. But in any case, usually you'll see this in uh, milliamps because that's the most common electrical other than high power devices. Most uh, components are in milliamps. But in any case, 2 kilo ohm, you can see we got twice the resistance. So for each volt, we're going to have 0.5 milliamps of current. So 4 volts, we're going to have 2 milliamps of current. But in any case, video has gone long enough. Hope you still enjoyed though. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description. But just watching videos helps out a ton. Thanks to everybody that does that. I will see you in the next video.